happening everybody what is happening i hope everyone's having a great day and uh keeping about as straight as we can in this effed up life we've got going on with the Biden administration and i'm getting texts like crazy but let's see who's in the house sandy was first in the house so she's the only one that really matters uh, so i'm told first one always matters Teresa, I feel, is in the house. Pilgrim. Beretta Hooch. How you doing, sis? Mrs. Metal. Scroll on down here, see who. I know we got some more in here. B Pop is in the house. Hey, baby, in the other room. If you're still listening. Kiss Off's in the house. Who else we got up here? Dusty Country Road. Y'all are doing well. Loving that garden stuff. Michigan Outpost. How you doing, brother? This and that with Matt. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right, I think I'm about getting to the bottom here. Rabbit Cody. How you doing, brother? Rock steady. Good to see you. Sandy's in the house. Fish sticks. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Teresa Buchanan, good to see you, sis. Maccabeus, how you doing, brother? I like those videos you've been dropping, man. G Monana, good to see you. Uh, for those, uh, Cigar Prepper, good to see you. Turning Guns, what is up? Everybody come on in, get your cigar, get your bourbon, get your 420, whatever you're doing, come on in, relax, kick your shoes off. We're going to be getting into a hot topic tonight, real hot topic, um, about as hot as it gets. Joe Morgan, good to see you, brother. Hope the world's treating you fairly as this fucked up world can. Anyway, y'all come on in the house, Prepper Book Club. I'm going to play a jam while y'all coming on in. I got a bowl to smoke, so, you know, do your thing. I'll be right back. Enjoy this tune. See which one I want to play for y'all. Oh, this one is nice and mellow. Yeah. Let's play this one. Come on in. What's up, Widow? What's up, Turkey? Go ahead and do them things that make you feel all right. All right, all right. This time is hollow. Time is all we got. Time ain't something you can borrow. Like some kids singing dimes on the block. So when you wake up this morning and you, you splash on them clothes. You look to your lover And you'll be sure that you let them know I don't wanna be The last man standing no more I wanna flow down the river With the big bear named Mo I wanna drink moonshine I wanna dance in the moonlight I wanna do the things that make me feel That make me feel alright it's gonna 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 make me feel alright I wanna stroll down the street Tipping the old hat Say, how'd you do, my lady? Ain't it just fine out tonight? Me, I get a cold one And I slide 
slide it down the bar I pull me up the smoke For a moment I say fairly well I don't wanna be The last man standing no more I wanna flow down the river With the big bear named Mo I wanna drink moonshine I wanna dance in the moonlight I wanna do the things that make me feel That make me feel alright It's gonna make me feel alright It's gonna make me feel alright Right, do the things that make you feel all right. Hope everyone's having a good night and feeling all right. Poet didn't even know it. Like a rhyme any old time. Lady Smith's in the house. Good to see you, sis. Glad everybody was enjoying the tunes. Enjoying the tunes. Betty, how you doing, sis? So good to see you. Thank you. Yeah, I like that jam too. I like that jam. See who else come on in the house that I miss. I think I said, hey, Blackbird, good to see you, sis. This and that with Matt. I can't remember if I said hey to you, but if not, hello again. Hello, hello. Right fish sticks. Puff, puff, pass, motherfuckers. Anyway, everybody's having a good night. Come on in the house. Uh, we've got a hot topic tonight. Um, I'm going to play about one more jam, and I know everybody's ready to get into it. But, you know, if you ain't got time to hang around, listen. Ain't nothing holding you down but air and opportunity, baby. Air and opportunity. But we're going to play one more jam. And uh, this one is by, of course, you know, you know, one of my faves. Let me find it here with New Breed and Jesse Howard breathing underwater because we're all struggling. We're all struggling. Now, hang on, because after this tune, we're going to get into this little 14 minute video that I got. And then we're going to jump into this shit waist deep. All right, everybody. I'm over here playing bad DJ. Let's go. These days my guns stay loaded. My family's a little more close. Sometimes we're barely floating. So please don't rock this boat. But if we tip on But he's lost on the river, never but went without, never had them cold shivers. Had a silver spoon, always warm in the winter. Drive a fancy car, never had to kill the standard. No bloody hands, never really had a backbone. Never been too deep down a back road. Never showed no respect to a flagpole. Come on, city boy, just another punk asshole. Be in mind, we gon' make it through them dark days. So take your ass on back down to Park Place. Before you end up in the deep end where them hungry ass sharks stay, we go hard all day. Been here, done that, that's a given. Out back, guns out, country living. If you doubt that, find out, come and get it. We ain't going nowhere. I'm about to go swimming. These days my guns stay loaded. My family's a little more close. Sometimes. 
times we're barely floating So please don't rock this boat But if we tip on over We won't wash to the shore Or sink down to the bottom Cause we've been here before And we can breathe underwater Been down at the bottom so long We can breathe underwater So tell them to bring it on Won't you take it back to them old days Just horses in a wagon Shotgun shells and wishing wells And you can hear them pistols blasting Better give them hell but live to tell Let's write another chapter We just want our country back And we gon' get what we after In them pastures, in them fields We the ones that keep it real You come stooping around here That'll probably get you killed Cold steel under cold skies A rebel soul from the old times Like Jesse James and those guys I'm watching you with both eyes I ain't telling no lies If you wanna come and get it Backwoods, country living Shotguns and ammunition Whiskey drink instead of sipping Saying to hell with the system I've been living at the bottom So I'm about to go swimming Y'all can hate it or you can love it But I promise we ain't budging If them boys looking scared Someone probably told them we're coming So y'all better get to running But don't head for them hills That's where the hell we living Round here we keep it real, boy These days my guns stay loaded My family's a little more close Sometimes we're barely floating So please don't rock this boat But if we tip on over We won't wash to the shore Or sink down to the bottom Cause we've been here before And we can breathe underwater Been down at the bottom so long We can breathe underwater So tell them to That's right, bring that shit on. Bring it on, bring it on. See who all's in the house. G Mom Merkel's in the house. Good to see you, sis. Camo Carl's in the house. Good lord, look at all these these fine ass people, these movie stars, these YouTube stars. Moose man's in the house. Have mercy. Man, I got to I gotta part my hair just right tonight. There's a fine ass audience up in here. The widows up in here, diary artist and poet. Listen, everybody, you know how I do. Drop your links. If you got a channel, drop them like they're hot. I wish I had something fancy set up where you just had a tight vision like Vision does on his, but I don't. So drop it like it's hot. Okay. Now to sum up some of this confusion. Um, tonight I'm running on Papa's Farm and I'm also running on Preppers and Patriots. Okay. I did this for a reason. If, if you are over, on Preppers and Patriots, I'm going to encourage you to come over to the Papa's Farm channel. If you are in Preppers and Patriots, please put a one in chat right now. If you're watching from over in that side. Teresa, I feels back in the house. Good to see you, sis. I'm going to give everybody a little task. If you're over in... Hey, Shorty, good to see you, sis. If you are over... And Preppers and Patriots. Okay, Turning Guns, you are. Dennis Bigfoot, you are. I'm going to ask you to please go subscribe to Papa's Farm. And jump over, over here with everybody in chat. I did it this way because sometimes some people are subscribed to Preppers and Patriots. Sandy, if you don't mind, jump on over here to Papa's Farm too. I know it's a little bit of work to ask y'all to do this right here in the middle. But if you don't mind. G Ma Nana, if you don't mind, go ahead and subscribe to Papa's Farm. Everybody come over to this side. I got a reason for that. I got a reason for that. And the reason I ran both of them tonight, like I said, some people subscribe to Papa's Farm. Some are subscribed to just Preppers and Patriots. I want to get everybody over onto the boat. Um, I've decided with my channel change up, it's going to be off of Papa's Farm. Don't worry. The top hat is going to slide off. Sometimes with the cowboy hat and sometimes the cowboy hat, hat's going to slide off and the top hat's coming out. So what's happening is I'm going to be deleting the Preppers and Patriots channel. 
I know, I know, I know. Yeah, a lot of work. Sometimes, you know, you go down a path and you realize it's the wrong path and you start backstroking. So, you know, it's what you have to do. It's what you have to do. So if everyone doesn't mind that's on Preppers and Patriots, please come subscribe to Papa's Farm. Jump over here. That way everybody's in the same conversation and I can make sure everybody has a wrench. So. Yeah, that's another thing, Teresa. I'm trying to keep people from having to bounce in between them. Anybody that doesn't have a wrench. I'm over here in Papa's farm, and I can only give you the wrench here. So jump over here to Papa's farm, subscribe, join us. That's exactly right, Native. That's exactly right, brother. I'm taking a minute for those who uh, you should start seeing your mod credentials coming up. Angela B's in the house. Good to see you, sis. Just checking, just checking. Everybody put a comment as you jump in over here on this side. I want to make sure I give you a wrench. You walk into this bar, everybody gets a gun. It's just how you use it. There's plenty of mods in here that uh, will quickly take you out if you try to start acting stupid. I trust my people. These are my people here. And I don't leave my people unarmed. Whether you're a new person or not. Just check and make sure Moose Man. Okay, yeah, I did get yours. Pepper Book Club got yours. Cool. Turning, you should have yours. Native, you should have yours now, brother. All right. All right. All right, we've played a couple songs. Let's get down into the nitty-gritty of tonight. Uh, it's not going to be a pretty topic. Tonight, we're talking about basically what would you do in a nuclear blast. Um, I know there's a lot of things that we say that we would do. Canadian, good to see you, brother. KP Heathen, everybody come on in the house. Uh, we're talking about tonight, again, about what would you do in a nuclear blast. Now, listen, I know for some of us it makes a difference. Okay, an example for myself. I live close to Fort Bragg. XNYCOG Prepper, good to see you, brother. Come on in the house. Man, we got to get you up on that uh, uh, American Got Talent. Over there lip syncing them songs like that. But for me personally, I live so close to Fort Bragg. Probably the best thing I could do is walk out my front door and just throw my arms open and embrace the suck. Just embrace the big old glowing ball and, you know, there's no way to outrun it. Um, the fallout alone, if I were, was to even survive the blast, if it wasn't to burn my lungs out or bust my eardrums or blind me from the initial blast. Virginia Roots, what's happening is sis. Good to see you. But what would you do? And I know, like I said, that answer is different for all of us because of where we live. Uh, for me, um, I don't think I could, could dig a hole deep enough uh, just for the fact because I would have to live in it for so long uh, with so much nuclear waste. As of right now, without having any proper nuclear gear other than some um, iodine tabs, iodine tabs maybe you know i don't know you know i've got some breathing apparatus but uh yeah it would depend on how the wind's blowing there's a lot of things that would would make the difference but now that mostly everybody's in here and i appreciate all 52 of you being in here i'm going to play this little video uh, now, this is not my video. This is something I took the time to put together. Lord, I don't have that kind of YouTube life. Wish I did. So I just play off of other creators, but I do make sure that they get the uh, the credit for it. This one is coming off of a uh, YouTube channel called, um, hang on a second, let me get it here again. End Times Productions. Um, pretty good channel. I don't always like all the content. I think some some of it's a little bit far fetched but this um he put a, a pretty good effort here in describing uh the 
what would happen during a fallout. This is basically some um, declassified documents and witness testimonies of uh, nuclear blasts, people who's actually lived through one and people who have um, um, kind of written about that, so forth. And this scenario is uh, basically what would happen if a nuclear strike happened first in Washington, D.C. And this is some of the prologue and some of the information comes from a book from Annie Jacobson's uh, new book called Nuclear War. So without further ado, I'm going to get into this video and I think y'all are going to enjoy this. But listen, we're not here to scare each other. This is to get our minds going. All right, city prepper, the hell are you doing in here without a gun? All right, sir, you are now armed. All right. So, again, like I said, without further ado, let's get this on up. Choo, 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 choo. There we go. See if I can bring it up just a little bit bigger here in a second. The story you're about to hear was crafted from a series of declassified documents and witness testimonies from top commanders and high-level individuals in America's nuclear program. Everything you're about to hear was meticulously calculated by scientists and pieced together by Annie Jacobson in her book, Nuclear War. Hell on Earth, Washington, D.C., possibly sometime in the near future. A one megaton thermonuclear weapon detonate and heat so tremendous, it is impossible for the human mind to comprehend. 180 million degrees Fahrenheit is four or five times hotter than the temperature that occurs at the center of the sun. In the first fraction of a millisecond after the thermonuclear bomb strikes the Pentagon outside Washington, D.C., there is light, soft x-ray light with very short wavelength. The light superheats the surrounding air to millions of degrees creating a massive fireball that expands at millions of miles per hour. Within a few seconds, the fireball increases to a diameter of a little more than a mile. It's light and heat so intense that concrete surfaces explode. Metal objects melt or evaporate, stone shatters, and humans instantaneously convert into combusting carbon. The five-story, five-sided structure of the Pentagon and everything inside its 6.5 million square feet office space explodes into superheated dust from the initial flash of light and heat. All the walls shattering with the near simultaneous arrival of the shockwave. All 27,000 employees perishing instantly. Not a single thing in the fireball remains. Nothing. Ground zero is zeroed. Traveling at the speed of light and radiating heat from the fireball ignites everything flammable within its line of sight, several miles out in every direction. Curtains, paper, books, wood fences, people's clothing, dry leaves explode and burst into flames, becoming kindling for a great firestorm that begins to consume a 100 or more square mile area that, prior to this flash of light, was the beating heart of American governance and the home to some six million people. Several hundred feet northwest of the Pentagon, all 639 acres of Arlington National Cemetery, including the 400,000 sets of bones and gravestones honoring the war dead, the 3,800 African-American freed people buried in Section 27, the living visitors paying respects on this early spring afternoon, the groundskeepers mowing the lawns, the arborists tending to the trees, the tour guides touring, the white-gloved members of the old guard keeping watch over the tomb of the unknown are instantly transformed into combusting and charred human figurines, into black organic matter powder. So we had a customer reach out and they couldn't decide which knives they wanted to pick. that is soot. Those incinerated are spared the unprecedented horror that begins to be inflicted on the one to two million more gravely injured people, not yet dead in this first bolt out of the blue nuclear strike. 
Across the Potomac River, one mile to the northeast, the marble walls and columns of the Lincoln and Jefferson Memorials superheat, split, burst apart, and disintegrate. The steel and stone bridges and highways connecting these historic monuments to the surrounding environment heave and collapse to the south. Across Interstate 395, the bright and spacious glass-walled fashion center at the Pentagon City, with its abundance of stores filled with high-end clothing brands and household goods, and the surrounding restaurants and offices, along with the adjacent Ritz-Carlton Pentagon City Hotel, they are all obliterated. Ceiling joists, two-by-fours, escalators, chandeliers, rugs, furniture, mannequins, dogs, squirrels, and people burst into flames and burn. It is the end of March, 3.36 p.m. local time. It has been three seconds since the initial blast. There is a baseball game going on two and a half miles due west at Nationals Park. The clothes on the majority of the 35,000 people watching the game catch on fire. Those who don't burn to death suffer intense third degree burns. Their bodies get stripped of the outer layer of skin, exposing a bloody dermis underneath. Third degree burns require immediate specialized care and often limb amputation to prevent death. Here. Inside the Nationals Park, there might be a few thousand people who somehow survive initially. They were inside buying food or using the bathroom indoors. People who now desperately need a bed at a burn center. But there are only 10 specialized burn beds in the entire Washington metropolitan area. At the MedStar Washington Hospital's burn center in central D.C. And because this facility is about 5 miles northeast of the Pentagon, it no longer functions if it even exists. At the Johns Hopkins Burn Center, 45 miles northeast in Baltimore, there are less than 20 specialized burn beds. But they all are about to become filled. In total, there are only around 2,000 specialized burn unit beds in all 50 states at any given time. Within seconds, thermal radiation from this one megaton nuclear bomb attack on the Pentagon has deeply burned the skin on roughly one million more people, 90% of whom will die. Defense scientists and academics alike have spent decades doing this math. Most people won't make it more than a few steps from where they happen to be standing when the bomb detonates. They become what civil defense experts referred to in the 1950s when these gruesome calculations first came to be as, quote, dead when found. At the Joint Base Anacostia Bowling, a 1,000-acre military facility across the Potomac River to the southeast, there are another 17,000 victims, including almost everyone working at the Defense Intelligence Agency headquarters, the White House Communications Agency headquarters, the U.S. Coast Guard Station Washington, the Marine One helicopter hangar, and scores of other heavily guarded federal facilities that cater to the nation's security. At the National Defense University, a majority of the 4,000 students attending are dead or dying, with no shortness of tragic irony. This university, funded by the Pentagon, founded on America's 200th birthday, is where military officers go to learn how to use U.S. military tactics to achieve U.S. national security dominance around the world. This university is not the only military-themed higher learning institution obliterated in the nuclear first strike. The Eisenhower School for National Security and Resource Strategy, the National War College, the Inter-American Defense College, the Africa Center for Strategic Studies, they all immediately cease to exist. This entire waterfront area, from Buzzed Point Park to St. Augustine's Episcopal Church, from the Navy Yard to the Frederick Douglass Memorial Bridge, is totally destroyed. Humans created the nuclear weapon in the 20th century to save the world from evil. And now, in the 21st century, the nuclear weapon is about to destroy the world, to burn it all down. The science behind the bomb is profound. Embedded in the thermonuclear flash of light are two pulses of thermal radiation. The first pulse lasts a fraction of a second, after which comes a second pulse, which lasts several seconds and causes human skin to ignite and burn. The light pulses are silent. Light has no sound. What follows is a thunderous roar that is blast. The intense heat generated by this nuclear explosion ignites a high-pressure wave that moves out from the center point like a tsunami, a giant wall of highly compressed air traveling faster than the speed of sound. It mows people down, hurls others into the air, 
bursts lungs and eardrums, sucks bodies up and spits them out. In general, large buildings are destroyed by the change in air pressure, while people and objects such as trees and utility poles are destroyed by the wind notes the archivist who compiles these appalling statistics for the atomic archive. As the nuclear fireball grows, this shock front delivers catastrophic destruction, pushing out like a bulldozer and moving three miles farther ahead. The air behind the blast wave accelerates, creating several hundred miles per hour wind, extraordinary speeds that are difficult to fathom. In 2012, Hurricane Sandy, which did 70 billion in damage, killed 147 people, had maximum sustained wind speeds of roughly 80 miles per hour. The highest wind speed recorded on Earth was 253 miles per hour at a remote weather station in Australia. This nuclear blast wave in Washington, D.C. destroys all structures in its immediate path, instantly changing the physical shapes of engineered structures, including office buildings, apartment complexes, monuments, museums, parking structures. They disintegrate and become dust. That which is not crushed by blast is torn apart by whipping wind. Buildings collapse, bridges fall, cranes topple over. Objects as small as computers and cement blocks and as large as 18-wheeler trucks and double-decker buses become airborne like tennis balls. The nuclear fireball that has been consuming everything in the initial 1.1 mile radius now raises up like a hot air balloon. Up from the earth, it floats at a rate of 250 to 300 feet per second. 35 seconds pass. The formation of this iconic mushroom cloud begins, its massive cap and stem made up of incinerated people and civilization's debris, transmutes from a red to a brown to an orange hue. Next comes the deadly reverse suction effect, with objects, cars, people, light poles, street signs, parking meters, steel carrier beams getting sucked back into the center of the burning inferno and consumed by flame. 60 seconds pass. The mushroom cap and stem, now grayish-white, rises up five, then ten miles from ground zero. The cap grows too, stretching out ten, twenty, thirty miles across, billowing and blowing farther out. It eventually reaches beyond the troposphere, higher than any commercial flights go, and the region where most of the Earth's weather phenomenon occurs. Radioactive particles spew across everything below as fallout raining back down on the earth and its people. A nuclear bomb produces a quote witch's brew of radioactive products which are also entrained in the cloud. The astrophysicist Carl Sagan warned decades ago. More than a million people are dead or dying and less than two minutes have passed since detonation. Now the inferno begins. This is different from the initial fireball. It is a mega fire beyond measure. Gas lines explode one after the next, acting like giant blow torches or flamethrowers spewing steady streams of fire. Tanks containing flammable material burst open. Chemical factories explode. Pilot lights on water heaters and furnaces act like torch lighters, setting anything not already burning alight. Collapsed buildings become like giant ovens. People everywhere. Hmm. <laughs> burn alive open gaps in floors and roof behave like chimneys carbon dioxide from the firestorm sinks down and settles into the metro's subway tunnels asphyxiating riders in their seats people seeking shelters in basements and other spaces below ground vomit convulse become comatose and die Anyone above ground who is looking directly at the blast, in some cases as far as 13 miles away, becomes blind. Seven and a half miles from ground zero, in a 15 mile diameter ring around the Pentagon, the 5 PSI zone, cars and buses crash into one another. Asphalt streets turn to liquid from the intense heat, trapping survivors as if caught in a molten lava quicksand. Hurricane force winds fuel hundreds of fires into thousands of fires, into millions of them. Ten miles out, hot burning ash and flaming windborne debris ignite new fires, and one after another, they continue to conflate. All of Washington, D.C. becomes a complex firestorm, a mega inferno, soon to become a mesocyclone of fire. Eight, maybe nine minutes pass, ten and twelve miles out from ground zero, the one PSI zone. Survivors shuffle in shock like the almost dead, unsure of what just happened, desperate to escape. Tens of thousands of people here have ruptured lungs. Crows and sparrows and pigeons flying overhead catch on fire and drop from the sky. 
as if it's raining birds. There is no electricity, no phone service, no 911. The localized electromagnetic pulse from the bomb obliterates all radio, internet, and TV. Cars with electric ignition systems in a several mile ring outside the blast zone cannot start. Water stations can't pump water, saturated with lethal levels of radiation. The entire area is a no-go zone for first responders. Not for days will the rare survivors realize that help was never on the way. Those who managed to somehow escape death by the initial blast, shockwave, and firestorm suddenly realize an insidious truth about nuclear war. They are entirely on their own. Former FEMA director Craig Fugate tells us their only hope for survival is to figure out how to, quote, self-survive. That here begins a fight for food and water. How and why do U.S. defense scientists know such hideous things? And with exacting precision, how does the U.S. government know so many nuclear effects-related facts while the U.S. public remains blind? The answer is as grotesque as the questions themselves. For all these years, since the end of World War II, the U.S. government has been preparing for and rehearsing plans for a general nuclear war, a nuclear World War III that is guaranteed to leave at minimum. Two billion dead. The end of civilization is upon us. Dead. All right, I'm going to make a uh, few points right here with this having been said with this video. Uh, first of all, End Time Productions, uh, in the description, there's a link to their page. If you want to go watch that video for yourself, they just put it out today. So uh, it should be easy to find on their page, End Time Productions. The link is in the description. <clears throat> and I want to make sure that uh, you understand that's their video. I give credit to them. Now, the other point I want to make. As you sit here in this chat, and I watch a lot of you uh, chatting back and forth, how much of this information did you pick up? I know that we like to think that we we pretty much know what it would be like in a in a nuclear blast but how much of that information did you pick up i'm making this point because 99 percent of us don't prepare for nuclear war that's one of the probably least preps that we challenge ourselves for, with because in that reality that's at least in my mind that is the uh, one of the worst uh case scenarios that a bunch of nukes just start popping off now, what I do want you to do is take this information that they gave in this video, and it's out there in other videos, I know, what your blast zone is, what's your survival, what's your, what's your time before fallout if you survive the blast, uh, things to do, uh, like at certain distances from the blast, you have to open your mouth so your eardrums don't bust. Um, but too close, it'll burn your lungs. Um flash burn to just having your skin melt off your bones where is your hot zone that's what i'm asking you as preppers to prepper where is your hot zone okay do you live near a a a base okay for instance just recently uh the iran is we know has been um bombing israel well they have all said also said that they are going to attack uh, the military bases. Um, and it seems to me that they've said this several times before as far as Iran, but uh, it again, I've seen another congressman come on and said that they're just weeks away from having a, a fully functional nuclear weapon. I mean, it seemed like last year they said they were two weeks away and the year before that, it wouldn't surprise me to have a nuclear bomb. But a lot of people say, well, if they had it, they would have used it. Well, you don't necessarily know that. You don't know that. Sometimes people, they have the fortitude to wait for the right moment. Is the right moment probably getting pretty damn close? In my opinion, yeah. Yeah. The thinner we spread ourselves, the easier it would be for them to get away with something. Um, but they did specifically, specifically say, they were going to attack American nuclear ba or, um, military bases. Now, again, 
There's one about 50 minutes up the road from me, Fort Bragg. If they were to light it up, okay, that's 50 minutes. They said the blast would reach out anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes in the local area as far as a local drive to that center zone. I would be right on the cusp of not getting, I'd probably get a flash burn, depending on the size of the nuke. Now, I, I want to challenge you to think about this information and where's your red zone? How far are you away from your red zone? And the reason that matters to me, the reason that matters to people that are preppers, and listen, I'm a religious prepper. If God takes us home before all this drops, you know, I'm all for it. Hey, hell yeah. But if he doesn't, I'm still going to prepare. And if I can't use my preps, if in my religion I am raptured, then maybe the person left behind can use it. You know, hey, whatever. I'm not going to, I'm not going to need it. So I say this. What is your red zone? Do you know that? Do you know how close you are to a military base? If it were to get struck, sometimes bombs don't always hit dead on target. They may hit a half mile off target. Over prepare. Over prepare. So, where are you at from a hot zone and prepare that way? If you're so close that you, you're just going to be one of those people that your flesh melts off the bone, most thing you can probably do is go outside and embrace it because the time limit that you would have between a notification of a nuke coming, you wouldn't be able to have much time to do anything. Even if you immediately were in your car and could floorboard it to the opposite direction. Okay? So think about your zone. Are you going to bunker in? Is your bunker nuclear proof? And if it is, do you have enough supplies down there to last past the fallout? And do those supplies always just need to be food and water? Would it need to be something like iodine tablets? Would it need to be something like a radiation suit, a Geiger counter, uh, things to help you? Me, and Chicken Whisper, we know how close we are, and we just hope that if it happens, it's quick, and it just melts us away. I mean, seriously, what else? Not that we wouldn't fight if we had a chance, but as close as we are, okay, say that they didn't hit our, our base. Definitely. I have iodine tablets. have gas mask i have things to help me but not everything and the point i wanted to, to put out there to you is that we have a lot of obnoxious crazy power hungry people who are trying to fight over things that only rich people can fight over only powerful people can fight over i want you to understand that it's important to vote. It's important to keep doing the motions of the Constitution. But in reality, we're just small fish in this big pond. There are some things that are outside of our control. We can't deal with whether it happens or not. We only get to deal with the reaction of it happening. The post part. Because we can't stop them from lighting us all up. I want everyone to think about what you would do. First of all, like I said with my religion, make sure you you got your house in order. And when I say your house, I'm talking about your spiritual house. Make sure it's in order. Make sure that you have a plan and that that plan includes the worst case scenario. 
you know, sometimes it doesn't matter how many beans and bullets we stack. Something like this, where we have leaders that are just wanting to pop off and, and get boisterous and, you know, have the biggest ball hanging contest. We're the small fish in the pond. That stuff's outside of our control. But, again, it's just food for thought. It's not for scare. Because remember, in the Bible, 365 times, do not fear. Do not fear. And I suggest you, whether you're Christian or not, do not fear. Things are outside of your control. Things are outside of your control. Fear has not fixed one problem. But fear has added difficulty to situations. It has added problems. Do not fear. Stay level-headed. You can't control what's going to happen to you. It's a fulfilled destiny already. The only thing that stands between you and your destiny is time. But prepare. Use that time to be prepared. Spiritually, physically, mentally. Bullets and beans. Stay in fifth, fit enough to be able to move around on your own. If at if willing, because I mean, if this stuff all pops off in twenty years from now, oh, I'm definitely you know, I'm definitely going to be if I'm still here, it'll be a a bunker down situation. It won't be a bug out. I'll die on this hill. Too old to run from it, but I'm not too old to fight it. Never be too old to fight it. I'm going to play another jam while everybody uh, lets that absorb a little bit. And this one I think everyone knows from Low Struggle Jennings. Caitlin Curtis. One of Dangerous Freedom's favorite. Baby, chill, don't medicate, just meditate. You waking up now, well, baby, you hella late. Educate, look at what's going on, let it resonate, accelerate. Find your inner hunger like you never ate. Agenda is to push the hate, separate and segregate. Don't celebrate quite yet, the storm is coming, cue for heaven's sake. Violence that they demonstrate, instigate and penetrate. The values of our country and our God is what they desecrate. My fighters ain't no featherweight. Pulling out the seams of the fabric that they fabricate. They feed us lies, manipulate, intimidate through fear and force. Forcing us to sit and wait till we come together, congregate, and then we liberate. Praying that you give me strength to find some love amongst the hate. Marching on these streets of blood till I see the golden gates. Troubadour, troubled souls, one of God's servants. Blade down, cut the grass till we see the serpents. Oh, one day, I hope you see the truth. This puppet shows ain't nothing new. Oh, one day, Swallow just digested. Suspected something's going on, but chose to just neglect it. Deflected by some breaking news. Oh, we just accepted. Expected just to fall in line and follow their perspective. Don't question their objective, but I got a lot of questions. How these kids molested, but nobody's been arrested. Read it in the testament, these children are protected. So I'm fighting all these terrorists, both foreign and domestic. Refuse to be directed. Lying, not a sheep. Only kneel to my God, so I'm dying on my feet. Uh, silence will be speak, but there's violence in the street. I've been rolling with the punches, I can't take it on the cheek. Uh, drink from a glass half full, I'm optimistic. People are sadistic, so vicious and malicious. Praying for assistance to overcome my position, or I'm gonna start resisting, and then I pray for forgiveness. Oh, one day I hope you see the truth. 
backwards What's yeah up, we uh god we do need you now and uh yeah that's uh yeah we've been running with the devil way too long go ahead brother sup, what are you about sup, to say sup everybody in chat how y'all doing man i see all y'all out there man how y'all doing i had to i had to eat and unload my truck and stuff all my equipment off it's supposed to rain and storm and maybe some hail and all kinds of good stuff. You know? Right, right. Anyway, what's yeah, up, we everybody? We were a bunch of that crazy listen. shit last week. Crazy shit, what? Yeah, the winds and shit like that, man. We oh. had it all last week. Right, right. Man, I tell you, um, I was listening to some, you know, as I was um, unloading my equipment and shit, but... Um, right right billy i know right um so anyway what's up everybody how y'all doing man i appreciate y'all coming over and hanging out with papa man um papa's a good dude i guess man i guess i'll say something nice about him you know <laughs> oh that's 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 sweet backwards that's sweet man i know it went against the grain but you know i appreciate it man i'll take all right. the biscuits you throw on my damn plate right right i, I understand i understand um man you know the nuclear thing brother it, it's really man i i don't know you know i one minute i think god dang man you know it's gonna be the end of the world and and you know they're gonna you know what i'm saying it's it's i don't want you know if if it comes down to where because we got a nuclear plant not too far from us way crow flies we got a one of our big air force bases not too far from us um you know i mean you know the you got the new madrid fault you know there's some thought process on on uh like hitting you know um different things like that where there's fault lines or volcanoes or whatever we got yellowstone right up there 
I, I mean, I pretty much, man, if, if, if we're going to get nuked, like, like it's like we're in Arkansas and they're like, dude, you know, Arkansas is about to get wiped out, you know, then I, I've told my family, I said, I think we ought to just go and, and, uh, you know, stand outside and watch the pretty fireworks, man. You know what I'm saying? Because that, you know, the, the, the bombs and stuff that yeah. they tested yeah. over in the, in the past and the, you know, Hiroshima and, and Nagasaki and all in play, man, that, that that weren't that weren't shit to to what they got now, and and you know what I'm saying. I, it's I I'm right with God, yeah. man. So I as right as I can be, you know, because there ain't something right about up here a lot of times. But it the, it's right right here. You know what I'm saying. And that's that's where the struggle is there between the heart and the mind always. But I don't know, man. I. I don't know that I'd want to live because like that video, man, I saw somebody, I kind of would stop in and kind of look to chat for a minute while I was unloading my stuff, getting all my stuff ready. And I seen somebody talking about that was uh, a lot smaller nuke that was in that video that you were playing. And man, I tell you, right. dude, um, geez, bro. Um, the the nukes they have now like that damn nuke that and it uh, was yeah them warhead the, the that russia has man that shit goes it's like eight or ten of them damn things on there yeah yeah man i think one of them has somewhere around the one that showed had like a i think a 15 mile light blast uh red area there's ones that they have that have like a 50 mile like red zone like that's that is it that's that's the middle of the opus right there right. you know what i mean 50 freaking miles and then it spreads out hundreds of miles beyond that and that's just one of them and if they were to drop two or three four you know strategically in the right places yeah we're all going to be hugging up to a nice big uh oh. you know fireworks show well i i think that the the problem with it is is that I actually looked something up this um, just a day or two ago, and it looks like uh, Russia has like sixty two hundred freaking nuclear war uh, nuclear bombs, like sixty two hundred. We've only got like yeah, 50, yeah man, like fifty two hundred or something. Or man, they've got quite a few more than we do, and I know, I know uh, China has them, I, but you know, I don't know. Man, I just don't, you know, because it seems like to me that I, man, I've been, I've been around for 55 years, man. I can remember when I was in grade school, man, them, them teaching us how to get under the desk. We had, uh, what was it? The, the shit, what was the one? Um, I, I think I ran had yeah, some that at one time. Duck and cover. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, Man, there was Cuban, maybe I don't know. Man, there was there was several things. You know what I'm saying? That it just seemed like you know we we went and ducked and cover. You know, taught us all that mm -hmm. what to do. And, you know, and 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 in reality, I mean, let's be real. Let's be realistic about this. You know what? You you have to take into consideration because I know a lot of people says I'm going to run over there and I'm going to do this. I'm going to run jump in my bunker. I'm going to go over here to this. I'm going to do this. The problem with it is, bro, I think I heard you say something about it as I was getting going out there to get the rest of my equipment. The The problem with that, with that is, is man, where the hell are you at, at that time? When, I mean, you don't get to pick and choose when they shoot a nuke at us, you know, um, like tomorrow, well, tomorrow it's going to be storming, but Wednesday, yeah, man, I'm going to mm -hmm. be, I'm going to be like 45 minutes from the fucking house, man. No, no. Doing, doing lawn care. And I mean, at that point you're just screwed. You know what I mean? That's, I mean, I, I, I don't mind to fight yeah. till the death, man. Um, if it comes to ground assault, you know, any kind of thing like that, I'll fight to the death. No problem, man. But 
man, I don't know, you know, some nukes. I mean, I, I think we need right. to be realistic about this, you know, because, hell, you could just be at the store in the back of Walmart, you know, that's 25, 30 minutes away. You're fucked, dude. You're done. I mean, you're not going to have time to get home. These things travel. Yep, exactly. These these hypersonic missiles travel at such a fucking pace, man, that they say by the time they launch it, by the time they send the alert to your phone, like you got like a couple of minutes. That's it. So, I mean, you, it, it's not like you're going yeah, to go. Exactly. They're going to go, hey, we're going to nuke you three days from now. Y'all better get ready. You know, no, if they decide to shoot off yeah, a nuke, they exactly. know that's in game. That's in game shit. And everybody needs to be honest with themselves, man, and realize, you know, all these bunkers and preps and all this stuff. It may it's good if you're at home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, exactly. You know, that's exactly right. And that's kind of the point I'm getting to is like, what are you preparing for? And how many scenarios are going through your head as far as what to prepare for? Like you said, what if you're not at home? What if you're 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, hour drive away from home at work? What are you going to do to survive in the moment and then possibly try to get back home, especially if you got loved ones there? Now, I want to ask you a couple of questions backwards um, Two, to be right off topic. And then there's another subject I want to get in that actually Moose Man had brought up about uh, yep. us going through probably more of a biological thing. But uh, the two questions I want to ask you is one just because i heard another senator say it again and it's not the first time i've heard it that iran is two weeks away from having a fully functioning Dude. nuclear weapon first of all how much of that how much of that do you believe second of all the second question is if they did have one if they had one do you think they would use it at all dude let, let me let me tell you i've been hearing they're two weeks away from having a nuclear weapon since back i think when trump was like right. a, like was in like first yeah. got in it, mm -hmm. 2016 2017 i remember hearing that same shit i'm gonna tell you my personal opinion i think they got i think they got several nukes i know that they bought a bunch of missiles hop them hypersonic or whatever ballistic missiles they they bought um some of them from uh russia yeah, exactly, Rabbit. Exactly. See, and that's and dude, I'm gonna tell you. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think the only way they would use, I, I think they want to do a lot of destruction and stuff, but they also know that if they shoot off a nuke and hit something like the USA or something, they'll have a lot of countries turn on them. You know, and. I, I would yeah. be I would yeah. be more afraid of a biological or or um, you know something like chem chemical type attack here in the United States, or you know four guys pulling up in a vehicle, jumping out with AKs and multiple you know multiple magazines and and just somewhere at a crowd wherever somebody you know a park or a mall or Hell, you know, think about it like this, man. If you if you pull up in the Walmart parking lot and everybody's doing their just their normal business and four guys get out, man, do you know how many people they could fuck up? Like in a quick hurry? I mean, yeah, I know. I'll carry a yeah. gun. I'll shoot yeah. that son of I mean, we, Well, I'll shoot it too. But, you know, the problem is, is damn, you know. I mean, we just need to be we honest. We saw those videos, man, where they were doing that. They were... Yeah, they were pulling up in the trucks, man. They were shooting in people's houses, and people, you know, had no idea what was going on outside. I mean, they just rolled up, and teams of them started coming out and go scanning the neighborhood and just blasting houses. Well, just think about it, man. Um, like, how many gunshots do you normally hear anyway? Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot around here. A lot. Exactly, yeah. man. I mean, I, hell, they got you, – you there's – you you tend to you tend to tune it out you hear it so often well there's a there's a cop shooting range right right down the road from me man them cops go over there and shoot a lot and they bring their buddies and stuff which i'm not buddies with them so they, they don't bring me over there but um like real talk man they 
they shoot all the time now. Here's shots over here, shots over here. There's a guy over there that likes to shoot. There's hell, I heard some shots downtown one night, man. It was about eleven thirty. Man, it was it was it sounded like an AR to me. You know, I, I got my shit out, man, was kind of peeking, you yeah. know, turned my lights yeah. out and shit, turned on my was peeking around corners and stuff, but you know, I mean, dude, I mean, we all, you know, yeah, city prepper. See, I mean, live in Chicago. Hell, you ain't gonna know if they're running around shooting, killing people, man. You might think it's, and that's that's the point, man. Is that that shit scares me more? But the two weeks thing, man. I my I I think Iran has has already has several nukes. My my personal opinion. I don't think they have. A whole lot but you know it only takes one or two man to really screw a place up you know what i'm saying yes, one or exactly two gets through. exactly yeah jr well let me city. ask you this too um, city people up here yeah. shooting and drinking <laughs> that <was> exactly yeah <laughs> see most yeah, exactly well hell we get that in the country too right moose man 50 50 miles is an immediate kill zone and see and and that's the that's the problem, man. The way crow flies, yes. yeah. We're not, you know. I'm I'm a little more than fifty miles, but man, we got some of these mountains and shit up here, man. If it that shit hit and rolled up and down them mountains, man. Hmm. Yeah. Now I want to ask you also, nope, since I'm within a hundred miles, brought the topic <laughs> up also earlier. If they were to do something biological, what do you think that they would do? Um, I think they're already doing it biologically. I think they're doing it um, uh, through uh, the jab. I think they were doing it through messing with, uh, like, giving those uh, wild deer injections. They are doing it in the food. Uh, they're doing it in the dry foods, putting the uh, crickets and crap in it. I think we're already under a mild biological type attack. But I understand what he's talking about, like something major coming out with the disease. I think that's almost to what uh, the COVID was about, was about um, dude, a test run. Dude, um, look, I don't know how much I can say on here, man, because, you know, the, the last time I did I a know, live brother. stream, I talked about a lot of this shit, man. I, I got a strike, so. Um, but Gil of Bates, y'all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> the man stood up at, um, one of them, uh, what was that? Um, shit. What's the damn, uh, oh shit. Well, that platform they do mean, where there's, yeah. where they do a lot of, they'll get up there and do conferences and shit. Uh, oh, uh, the um, not the economic one, but the uh, no, no, the, uh, it's that other it's one. That, no, it's not Davos. Or, it's it's like no, it's like it's it, like you can see it on YouTube channels and shit. TED Talk. There you go, uh, G Ma. Oh, TED Talk. Ted, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah G Ma. Okay. TED Talk. Bill Gates stood up on there. Oops, I said it, but. <laughs> He stood up on there and flat said, we could, <laughs> we, could, we, could, we, could, we could reduce, we could reduce the population through vaccination. The man flat said it, and he's bragged about that mm -hmm. shit multiple times, yes, man. And that's why, you know, that's why I've said a lot of times, y'all, I'm, I'm like, dude, y'all, you know, people that, man, bro, I, Man, if some people held me down and Listen. stuck in, they, in me right now, dude, I'm telling you, when I got up, if I didn't kill over right then, if I didn't wake up dead, man, I'm telling you, there's some folks going to wake up dead yeah. after that one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you're you right about that. There's some of us that's going to be leaving out of that mofo uh, um, vertical, and uh, there's going to be other folks who are leaving out of their horizontal. That's all I'm saying. But. <laughs> I definitely think that um, we have something that's in the brewing for that just because, man, they're trying to bring it back. I mean, and they're still out there playing with their toys, you know, 
talking about all this stuff that, you know, like that disease X. I mean, to me, it seems like they're just out of powder keg and until they get the right fuse and look, they know look. that some of this isn't quite working. It's not taking off when they're setting the seeds. You know what I'm saying? And the shit's fizzling out. Well, the see everything that they do, they got a cure for. They make they they make a cure before they let that shit out, man. Because in case it gets oh yeah stupid, oh yeah. you know. So they they got a cure for everything, yeah. man. That they um, that they play with and release. Um, so I mean, yeah, we yeah, we that's don't for their front door though. Yeah, they're not, dude. They're. I mean, it's it's very obvious they they want to reduce the population and they want to do it by as much chaos as possible. I mean, I I really believe that 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 for them it's about the chaos. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, it's like you know back in the back in the days when the Romans, you know, and they would have in their arenas, you know, and they would have the fighting and and all the different things going on, you know, then people would sit up there and eat their eat their damn food you know yeah. and lick their fingers and you know and drank their wine and shit while people were killing each other down there they that that shit ain't never went away man that shit it's been like that since the beginning no. of the time no. chaos and yes. they're sitting back yes. laughing exactly going yeah we're doing this we're doing that you know how I look at them you know look how scared all them some bitches were during during the initial covid man wearing the mask and and had them fighting each other over not distancing properly. And I mean, dude, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's why I, I man, nuke wise, God dang, man. I just, I don't know. I, I don't see the powers that be allowing nuclear. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Hutch. Yeah. Promote homosexuality, man. I mean, and puberty blockers, dude. And I mean, they, and they say in that coup shot, man, there's a lot of them, some of bitch, some bitches that, uh, um, some of the young people, man, that it's sterilizing them and shit, you know? And you take a, you take yeah. a, yeah, you exactly. take a, a population that turns homosexual, man, the way that, that, that they are nowadays and and dude you think about it a hundred years man and there that's a hell of a depopulation you know what i'm saying i mean they dude they exactly. said uh you know and that's well let's take a quick look at how long they've been talking about this shit backwoods i mean how what year was it they erected the georgia godstones shit i don't that remember. was back in what the 80s they did that. I want to say it was in the 80s. I may be wrong. Someone can fact check me on that, but they've been thinking about it way before that. They've had these evil cabals that have been the big players, the money shakers in the back door that's been in to have the gall and the balls to etch it out in so many different languages, telling the world what they want to do in plain English, what they expect the world population to be and what they need to survive they've been telling us giving us hints dropping us signs telling us right to our face you know what they want now the the problem we're having to guess is which way are they coming at us and it seems like they're coming at us from always food water air i mean what you know those are some of the three biggest things food water air which one of those haven't been fucked with between chemtrails between you know uh, the all the uh, production plants being burned down, between the crops you know GMO'd, you know they, they're making seeds where you can't even get a seed and and continue a crop anymore unless it's a certain type of seed, and then the 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 stuff that they put in the food is unhealthy for us. On and on and on. It's like Hutch is saying, it's a death by a thousand cuts, and it starts y'all so in the school. <laughs> fucking camel attacking Carl. the children fucking camel carl, camel carl <laughs> he's funny as shit under section ready to repopulate most of the american standing by <laughs> uh my <laughs> man camel carl said i'm my man camp camo said he is he is uh he is at the ready 
You know what I'm saying? He's he's ready to right. do service. All right, service. all you single ladies. <laughs> yes. <sir. laughs> Y'all line up. He said he got somebody. He's somebody of pure blood. <laughs> I I just wanted to say that. Yeah, when man, I looked at that uh, email, I don't think that they would nuke either. I agree. Go ahead, brother. I just wanted to say when I looked at that email, I seen the names that were on that email, and I just want to say that mm -hmm. I've seen a couple of them for sure in here, and uh, I'm just gonna say they're yeah. <coughs> chicken yep. shit pussies. <clears throat> we're not coming on the panel, but anyway, y'all right there, um, brother? You all right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I had same thought. You know, I would, I would, I would be more concerned with, with, you know, biological EMP. Um, that would, dude. You, there's people can't survive without the electricity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they can. Yeah. Man. It, it's just yeah. all there is. All there is yeah, to it. There's, a lot of people's going to die, man. I mean, there's a lot of people just, just think about the medical medically needs people that have these different, you know, um, these different equipment and stuff at their home, you know, these dialysis machines, the, the heart things, the, you know, all these different machines that they have at home, man, all the electricity cuts, all that shit's gone, man. People die, you know? Um, exactly and, and there's some of them because of the machines and then there's some of them that's just so attached to having ice cubes and a and a phone charger and air conditioning that uh they'll just give up the will to live mm -hmm. well, I, I, people I mean, that week well let's let's talk about that rabid let's say nobody has power but you do what do you think's going to happen because you can only hide, um, you know what I'm saying? You can only hide light and shit like that for so long, man. People, I, I mean, it, it's just a lot of stuff that I that I see, man. And I, I, I think about it and I'm like, damn, you know. And if you got a lot of food and you're cooking food and shit, man, you can, dude, I, man, I'll be driving down the road in the country out here, man, and I can smell biscuits and gravies and eggs and bacon and shit being cooked right. at these houses, you know, when I'm passing by. I mean, you know, exactly, Canadian. I mean, there's there's no hiding th that generator, man. I mean, it's, you know, your lights. I mean, I guess you can black out your windows and all this stuff and hope nobody spots your shit, but it, there's a lot of shit to, to, right. to really think about, man. Um, there is. I mean, there really is. I mean, you know, that's kind of what I want to bring up is that we talk about beans and bullets a lot, you know. But what are you doing to think about all these these things that you know? Okay, you say you're you're like that. Say, oh, I've got the Jennies, I've got the solar power. You know, I can set up my solar panels. How you know people aren't going to be stalking your ass from the wood line? How do you know that that, that solar panel is not going to throw off a light glist, especially if you live down in the valley, that's going to set off somebody's attention? That right glare will be just like a mirror in the sun. And, I mean, you got to think about all these things that you, you might have this stuff to survive with, but are you really going to get to use it? Well, yeah, not – and, Rabbit, I, no, I agree 100%. Um with the, with the community thing and uh yeah Kentucky survival I y'all just now um got the got the interwebs well and and you know like up in the up in the mountains and you know if you live way the hell out you know and stuff well you're one of the lucky ones you know but people are still going to be searching and and stuff and you know the the community is going to be so important and and the understanding honestly of when to to bug out or when to when to establish this is is as far as it goes for yeah that's a good point moose man after the nuclear war there there won't there won't be no sun for a while man for a long time you know so all the solar panels and shit man they're not they're not gonna hang bro um i i, I agree angela um but yeah it's 
I mean, it's just a lot of reality we need to think about, and I, I think it's just going to go more kinetic. It, it, if anything, there'll be some biological attacks. People will fucking wig out. There'll be the power cut off. Internet will go down, and, and people will wig out, man. And, you know, it'll, it'll be violence on the streets. Yeah. I, I, I don't see them. I mean, man, anybody that shoots a nuke at us, I, I'm telling you right now, man, they're they're gonna get return fire like a motherfucker, and I mean they're gonna know, you know what I'm saying. So that 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 thing what what Virginia Roots was talking about earlier about mad, I seen that in the in the chat. You know, mutually assured destruction, man. I mean, damn. Yep. What's up, Roots? What's up? Yeah. And yeah. I am not chicken shit. In my defense, what's I up, sis? I haven't checked that email in a couple of months. I just went in there and I am missing 241. So it's not, <laughs> I just never get in. What's up, y'all? No, I agree. I don't think, I'm not really worried about a nuke. And if it does hit, you know, we're we're going to be dissolved and disintegrated pretty quick. It, it really is mutually assured. And I saw a few people in chat mention about the infrastructure. And I agree with that. If if someone was going to destroy us, I think they would want to keep the infrastructure of America among the best in the world, you know? So I think they'd want that. I, I don't think they'd want to destroy it or okay. make it where, I mean, how many years would it take before it was habitable again here? Yeah. Decades, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, right. I, yeah. It, it would take a long time. You know, the, there's a lot of stuff. I don't know how many people is keeping up with it or whatever, but I look at it, I, you know, all the time. And, dude, there is so many freaking stabbings and, and robberies and it's raining. Um, and, I mean, all this, dude, there, it is so chaotic in a lot of places. Man, they've got multiple um, places shut down today. Uh, the the pro Palestinian protesters and stuff they got multiple like to the airports and and all kinds mm -hmm. of places bridges the uh, I think yeah. I've seen the Golden Gate Bridge was was shut down um, one of the big airports it was completely shut down by all these people and dude it's it's um uh, you know yeah dude the chaos is. It's going yeah, to ramp all up. Of, yeah, all of them. Yeah, all of America had some big outburst where they were attacking some cops in here. Some kids were uh, kind of almost like the same kind of group that had shut down the bridge in San Francisco there. Hmm. And uh, man, it's happening all over the place. Now they're talking about this new gang that's in New York that's coming from um, over there in Venezuela. One of these groups uh, that look, look, La Marta or something like something like that. The La something. They've already arrested like five or six of them. But uh, man, it's like ha happening everywhere. They're letting all these people in. They don't know who they've let in. Right. Not count. We've already had chaos before they started opening the door. I mean, come on. Let's look at Black Lives Matter. Let's look at Antifa. Uh, we already had these like little gangs, and now they're actually letting prisoners. Prisoners. This prison that they had over uh, where this new gang is coming into New York at the look, whatever it is, the love, whatever the end that side, that prison, they had tunnels dug under it. Now the prisoners were running this. This is how you know it inside the prison. The kids could come in and out through these tunnels and visit their parents. The kids would be running around inside the prison. They had a water park inside of the prison. They had a movie theater inside of the prison. What? This was all ran by one big cartel guy inside the prison. Oh. Yes. They had a water park. Man, there's water park. There's multiple. There's multiple of these places, these countries that have been letting all the prisoners out and escorting them to an airplane and, and flying them over to one of the places where these uh these ngos are 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 at 
Huh. I mean, dude, I'm telling you, they, they've been emptying their prison. Dude, I'm telling you that, I, man, I, I don't mind to get down at, at all. I, I, you know, I'll fight to the death, all that good stuff, yada, yada. But I'm going to tell you, we if it ever sparks off kinetic, brother, we got a hell of a fight on our hands, man. I'm telling you now, yeah. dude, because these yeah. people, we're, we're not fighting against another American that, that gets pissed off. We're fight. We we're gonna right. have to fight against people who enjoy killing. Man, they 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 get that they, they get off. They are not shit. gonna hesitate. They are not gonna hesitate. The luxury that you take of American hesitating, or any person hesitating in a fight, when they right. pull a gun or they pull a knife or they just confront you with fist, you will not have that luxury with these people. These people, like Backwood said, they live to fight. They live to kill. They live to see us die. Some of them chant it in the streets. They got their kids chanting this stuff. And if you're not teaching your wife or your loved one or your daughters or your girlfriends or your mom how to shoot a gun, how to protect herself, you're doing an injustice to your family. Hey, Indy. You know, Uh, I came across a channel yesterday that was live on the streets of Philadelphia. And it was just some dude. There's a lot of these on the tubes. You can find pretty much every major city with someone walking around it live for just to kind of show. And I couldn't believe I've been to Philadelphia. I, it was unrecognizable. I mean, every business down there and in a certain amount of blocks was completely shuttered down, closed off. There were people pissing in the street, pushing their Sharpie. I mean, the, the classic view of homelessness, but it is so out of control. And and there were several also where you can tell that they're there to uh, make a sale, if you know what I mean, whether it's no matter what kind of fix it is, the fix might be a person or it might be a drug. It doesn't matter. Um, so what right. I see happen, we're being rotted from the inside out. And that weakness is what we're going to be preyed upon. You know, that's what's going to be preyed upon our own weakness yeah yes be Papa. yeah exactly that's yeah that's exactly what they're doing yep. kentucky they're 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 fucking it's a it but it's it's not so silent that's the problem with it is they're they're trying to make it silent but everybody sees it man everybody knows it dude um and Dude, I'm telling you, we got a hell of a mess on our hands, man. Here's a uh, police reportedly arrest about 30 individuals who chained themselves to vehicles. It was, uh, I think this is on the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, I mean, man, there's there's multiple of these that happened today. It was supposed to be some kind of solidarity deal today. And I mean, man, there is thousands and thousands and thousands of these people, man. They don't, they don't, I'm telling you, they don't give a shit, dude. Yeah, they don't, man. They don't. I mean, that's why I say we've already had a chaotic group here before. And I'm kind of almost waiting to see if there's going to be a confrontation of these immigrants on the street. And say if Donald Trump does take the uh, presidency again, you know there's going to be Antifa in the street. And all the other uh, writers wonder if there's going to be any confrontation with some of these uh, illegal migrants or Dude. will the government kind of control that and keep them separated from each other? Oh. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? The government would have the, the, the ability to pull them to the side away from the media cameras, make sure the media doesn't show any of that keep them separated because that would be a a grenade in their plan yeah i i don't know man i i'm just telling you we got a mess on our hands man i mean there there ain't enough law enforcement to 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 definitely to fuck with all of us if we stood together as far as it goes around the nation with all the like-minded people but there, there, right. there ain't even enough. There ain't even enough law enforcement to handle the the immigrants that have came in. Man, they're not, they're not doing. 
the police ain't doing nothing about it, man. I watched um, one where uh, dude dude was like trying to run from these two immigrants, man, and and they was they had machetes, man. And that one dude was like hacking at that dude with that machete, man. He was running. That dude hit him on the back a couple of times, and he's all you know, and he runs. And it's like, dude, this shit's happening everywhere in the country, man. It's mainly the big cities but you know what i'm saying it's 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 starting to it's starting to get worse yeah. man. it's going to get worse too yeah good night Teresa. and i just want to drop this night sis have a good one Teresa. um i want to drop this to anybody that's over on my uh, preppers and patriots channel come on over to papa's farm and sub here um preppers and patriots Patriots channel is probably going to be going down soon. So if you don't mind, come on over here, join the chat. That's why you probably, if you're still over there on Preppers and Patriots, you're not seeing many people in chat. Um, B Pop, I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. They, the, the, watch what you say. Next thing you know, they're gonna be at your door wanting to question you. That that's coming i i'm gonna tell you right now and dude, they've been collecting evident you know collecting our data for a while i've already had two different comments on my on a couple of videos i got one wanted to know um if i knew where i could where where they could get a gun oh no way yeah yeah you know oh, wow. a good Damn. Price. and i was like yeah academy sports they sell them every day man at good prices <laughs> right. and another exactly. one exactly another one another one flat out asked me was i three percent militia uh -uh. oh shit. Yeah. yeah it's like uh, what are you talking about what is that define that for me <laughs> i, I said <laughs> I just, I just basically said, I don't know. I, I said, I don't, I, I'm not involved in any type of group whatsoever. And, exactly. you know, and I'm not, and, and I'm actually not. So, I mean, I'm not lying. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not part of any group. Right. You know, but right. they're, they're watching, man. They're dude. I'm telling you they're, they're coming, man. I, all, all you motherfuckers in chat right now, every single one of you, they see you. And yeah coming. right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm just saying. And uh, what's up, Hillbilly? I sent you a link too, brother. You and Hutch. That's right. Yeah. I'm gonna call y'all out. Yeah. <laughs> yet. I mean, it's it's pretty bad whenever the woman on the panel has more balls than than the dudes, man. Man, I'm not chicken. Well, shit. shit, that was a that that was a given <laughs> Virginia roots though. <clears throat> that I mean that was easy pluck right there. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. I mean, I think uh, some things, you know, if we lose the sun, let's say there's something nuclear, there are some things, it depends on where you are, like Rabbit was saying, where are you ready to hunker down for two years? Are you ready to, you know, right. go underground for quite a long time? Because that other than that, I think we're all melting. I'm melting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's the biggest point I want to get to is like, you know, sometimes even if you are prepared to go underground for two years, are you mentally ready? Uh, would you be able to withstand it? Is it would it even be a life worth living for you? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just depends on how much I guess you have to protect. Like if it was just me, no, I'm going to go out and embrace the suck just because, you know, I mean, the world that's going to be left after that, it ain't going to be much of shit anyway. <laughs> But yep. if I had others that I'm caring for, that changes the script. Well, exactly, City Prepper. It's exactly an ideal. It's not a group. Exactly. And thank you, Annie. Annie G. But yeah, it, I I don't know, man. It's it you know a lot of re reality needs to, um, you know we need to come to terms with with reality. And like I said, the very first thing, if if they shot a you know shot some nukes at us, if anybody shot nukes at us, 
and and we were pretty sure it was going to hit like i said if it if it's like russia and china and some of these people man that have these these you know they can be here in in in, in minutes dude I, you you ain't got dude you're you're just you're just where you're at bro i mean you know what i'm saying yeah. um and it's right exactly I mean, it's, it's, it, you know, but I mean, if you're lucky enough to be at home, I mean, it, it, let's, let's just say you got 15 minutes by the time it, you know, they, they detect it by the time they get the alerts out, they, they make a decision on make, you know, doing a, an alert, you know, an emergency alert like that to, so that, you know, I mean, you're, you're, even if you're at home, bro, you get, you got minutes, you got minutes yeah exactly so i mean as exactly. far as it goes for if yeah. they were to do a nuke, which i i don't i man i just i don't know i don't see it happening the only the only people that i think would and you know would would do a nuke would i i'll, I'll be honest with you man i netanyahu i i think he would shoot a nuke at iran Maybe. i i really do. I, I, I think Netanyahu would. Netanyahu, I'm gonna tell you something. They there's a lot of uh, legal talk and stuff about the stuff he's done, and like he's already like under heavy investigation for war crimes, you know, by you not you know the UN and and these places, and they're they're kind of allowing this stuff to happen, but they're you know they're basically saying when he's not in power, he will be up for war crime charges lots of them huh. you know what I, I tell you what i tell you what the backwoods uh just looking at it on a uh, even kill and with a honest eye a lot of american uh politicians could be put up on the same charges oh absolutely i no, i don't disagree I, i'm not i'm not saying he's any different than anybody else i'm just saying i i, I think they're going to get him Right. I, I think he's going to be one they're they're going to yeah. get him. I, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on with the Jews, you know, the back and forth with the different kind of Jews and the Christians and the going on over there. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of stuff going on in Israel, man. And I, um, I, I don't know. You know, Netanyahu would be one I think would use a nuke. Now, I I don't know about Russia as far as it goes for you know if Putin's telling the truth or not. But apparently, in their decree someone has to shoot a nuke at them before they before they can use a nuke right they have a panel of people and and it's like a quick you know it's a pretty quick kind of decision thing for certain i'm sure for certain scenarios but yeah. from what i've read man it, it looks like that like it's it's in their decree that they they cannot use a nuke first well, there, there are some fail safes, but one thing I think about is if somebody with the button, let's say they are dying or they have gone mad in themselves and they just want to take everyone down with them. Um, there's been rumors about a lot of leaders doing that, right? But I think that could be one of the only ways something like that was dropped is if someone maniacal or out of sorts had access to that button to the to the lap and i don't know how many people are at the final fail safe i think there's got to be a dude to turn a key a dude to hit a button a dude to hit another button uh, like I, I don't think it's just one person that can roll that through but what if we had a conspiracy of crows what if we had three or four of them all on their way out got together found a way to get that button yeah, I, I mean, there's there's always possibilities of, of anything, you know, but I don't I mean, you're but you're also talking about if they're on their way out, you know, they know that there's nothing to go out to because once they fire that nuke, it's I mean, I'm telling you, the first person that fires a nuke is is probably going to going to see a lot of shit coming their way yeah well i'm saying if it's a dying person someone on their basically their deathbed they get some kind of terminal illness and they don't care they just want to take everyone down too now uh, there's there's a lot of fail safes it, it would be hard I to 
I mean, you know, it, it would be hard to, to, you know, because, I mean, think about it. We ain't even seen it yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, That's that's why. I mean, I, I don't know. Like I said, I, my, my personal belief is, is that all these countries that's getting flooded, all these Western countries that's getting flooded with all these immigrants that, that we're, we're going to have. We're gonna have a hell of a fight on our hands when they when they get the call or whatever it is. Good night, B. I hope so, night, B. As long as there aren't night, enough at the it. very top of the protocol that would conspire to make it happen, it would take a conspiracy. Is what I think. I don't, I don't think any anyone's interested in doing that to each other. I think it's kind of more of a crime deterrent, so to speak, than an imminent threat. Yeah. Here's the way I see it going down. If they don't take Netanyahu out of the equation, I agree that he's going to get boisterous and he's going to attack real hard. And it's going to make everybody kind of think about the kind of leader he is. So if they don't take him out, I see it going this way. I see it that, um, Russia is going to help Iran. We're going to be in a war with Israel against uh, Iran and Russia. That's when China will attack um, um, over at, uh, you know where the hell I'm talking about. Uh, they, don't, they're, they're, Jesus. they don't have to. Uh, they don't have to attack Taiwan. They just said it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Taiwan. They don't have to attack Taiwan. The Biden administration has already been very clear that they see Taiwan as part of China, and that the only, that yeah. that they that they they agreed with with Taiwan's sovereignty sovereignty, but if as long as China don't take them by force, then everything's cool. So mm-hmm. you know, um, let's say a couple of people get Clinton sided. <laughs> Oops, you know what I'm saying? And before you know it, bam, just like with our voting system, you know, boom, it's 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 done and over. You see what I'm saying? Get right. the right people in power right, right there. And, and Taiwan belongs to China. And the bottom. Honestly, I think we're sleeping yeah. on the South China Sea. The, the stuff in Europe, the Ukraine, all of that, I, I believe it's more or less distraction. I think that what would bring our country the U.S. into a very kinetic situation would be something in the Pacific and South China Sea. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's exactly right, Rabid. They <clears throat> they allowed a lot of immigration of people that that didn't like them really, and that, and, and it was I you know probably some more of that inclusive friendly shit. You know, let's. Let's mm-hmm. all be friendly to everybody and love everybody and let's let them in here and let's let them in there. Yeah, the problem with it is is that not everybody sees eye to eye. It's hard enough to get a bunch of Americans to agree on shit, much less people with a different right. ideologies coming from all different countries and shit, man. Welcome to Costco. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> it's right. the way. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> oh man. Yes, we are living in that movie as we speak. I want to get mm-hmm. back in my time pod and go back to sleep. Fuck this shit. <laughs> All right. It's a bad deal, man. I woke I, up at the wrong year. It's a bad deal, but I I mean it just is what it is. And, you know, I, I, I said bunches of times back when, when the Antifa BLM shit started, I, I said, man, people better stand up now. I, I, I believe that was the, the time I did. I right. still do. Right. I still believe it. I believe if, if the, if, if the Patriots or, you know, the, the, the real Americans, you know, would have came out in, in hundreds of thousands and been like, hell no, y'all not doing this to where I live. Hell no. That I, I believe we yeah. would be on a completely different path right now. I really believe that. 
I mean, prove me wrong. Show, I mean, I know they've been working on shit for a long time. Yeah. But if you think about it, look at look at the escalation since BLM Antipa and and they were allowed to do all the shit because they showed up in numbers and we did and 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 look at the escalation since then and and all the bullshit that's went on prove me wrong the only difference i see there is that with the blm and tifa it was very organized like it was ultra organized and had backers like soros that just got that funded it got it on the media all of that Mm -hmm. because and i think the difference is is that if something grassroots happened it's not going to be soros funded it's not going to be that type of organized you know it's gonna well be- not not anymore not anymore because yeah, there, there's anymore. there's there's still there's still a lot of funding going on for things but yeah there is i mean you but you also got to think about it as far as it goes for um soros um you know <laughs> it, it, if you if you think about it, if you think about the funding, because I agree with you on the BLM Antifa, it was a lot of organization going on there. But again, yeah. like I said, um, if, if there would have been enough people stand up against that, you know, there's been many a prize fighter paid lots of money to win fights and get their ass kicked. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. money doesn't right. money doesn't mean that that you you um get to just kick everybody's ass it, it just it's all on it, it's more about how far do you want to go and you know how many people are going to stand up to it yeah you know and and it's right. just been utter chaos ever since and y'all know you can safely say those names by saying sorge goros and um uh gil bates sorge goros we know who you're talking love- about Yep. Absolutely. But that, that was yep. very orchestrated. It was somewhat of a test, like a societal test to see how people would react. Most people pussied back. Most people mm-hmm. allowed their businesses. Now, I don't want to say a lot of people lost small businesses. That's not what I mean. But when I see all these cities with all the basic businesses shut down, whether it's a little restaurant or a laundromat or a um you know a watch store or whatever none of them are operating anymore all of them took a huge loss and pushed us even further into the oligarchy technocracy that we're seeing go on so i think it was both a test and also like uh corralling us into that pen yeah it's yeah, desensitization of evil, Carl. That's exactly what I'm saying. Oh, absolutely. Yep. 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 Giving up your sovereignty. Well, I mean, but you know, obviously, you know, there, and I, I've spoke out against this ever, ever since I first was coming on YouTube, and you know, people would ask about Not bugging JR. out, you know, like lone wolfing, and I. My, one of my buddies, man, that, 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 you know, I fish with and stuff. He, he's into some prepping, not, not a whole lot, but he's into it a little bit. And, you know, he, he was talking about, I'm just, I'm grabbing my shit and going to the mountains, man, just living off, you know, living just, and I'm like, well, so, I mean, how do you build your structure, man? You know, well, I mean, I'll have tools with me. And I'm like, all right, well, what about food? Well, I, I mean, I'll have my guns and ammo with me. I'm like, dude, how much shit do you think you can carry, brother? I mean, first off. I'm right. And, and, you know, I, I think I think it's my my personal opinion is, is community is the only way to go. I mean, that's, you know. I mean, if somebody told me Lone Wolf. It is. Right, I agree with you. I would laugh at them. I'd be like, man, are you... Well, you know, I'll come hunt for you whenever. You- um, the title of this show is "Hunker Bunker or Open Arms." Um, I agree. We're going to need community. We're going to need. I don't. I guess that might be hunkering down with people. Um, 
if you are blessed enough to have a bunker rocket i hope you have two three years worth of shit. um open arms is a option could happen in acute settling of of matters you know acute uh bringing who's in control to the surface <laughs> right <laughs> right for all we're gonna need each other for sure if we survive the, the lone wolf thing is there's, down, it's it's don't get me wrong it i mean is there's people out there right now that's been living mm -hmm. like that for you know years and years and years and i i don't disagree with that at all right but we're not talking about the same situation as right now we're talking about a completely different situation where shit's hit the fan where it's you know i'll be right back you too people are people Hold are People are, you know, like going chaotic and shit. You know, it, it's 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 a whole okay, different so scenario. Chaos is inevitable. At whether you're hunkering down, lone wolf with people, whatever, chaos is inevitable until the dust settles. Now, um, Moose, you're saying communities don't work. Too many assholes want to be chiefs, leads to trouble. So. Are you saying then lone wolf or thinking more a smaller group? Or I guess my overall question is, you mean lone wolf would be better? Because I, I don't think lone wolf is the way to go. I think that's a death sentence pretty quick. Good night, Miss Mel. Uh, well, the the, people all right, so, so the community thing, man, um, I, I think, I, and, and if I'm wrong, most men correct me, but, you know, I, I'm, I think he's talking about, like, big communities, and I I, I agree, uh, uh, you know, it's it, it'd be hard to do a big community, because, hell, we can't even agree on shit, you know, half the time in, in little small chats, you know, 40, 50 people, and yeah. so... You know, I, I'm I'm talking more of a you know m my ideal has always been about you know probably six to eight men with 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 women uh -huh. and and you know maybe maybe a few ki you know some kids involved but you know not too young I mean that's that's always kind of been my thought process was you know to where we've got you know. 14, 15 people total, maybe 20. Right. You know, 20 is a good number, I think. And family type group rather than a big community. So I think you're basically yeah. on the same, I think right. we're on the same line there. Because I agree, yeah. if, if you have more than a few dozen people, you're going to have to create your own government. You're going to yeah. have to create a pecking order and it's going to devolve to exactly what we see going on right now <laughs> with corruption and power plays and all of that. But uh, more of a family size. You see what's on my shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Moose, you know, when we start getting older, I know you're a little older than I am, but when you start getting, when we start getting older, we got to watch out with, you know, 12, 13 women, man. That's, that's, bro, that's, <laughs> that's a mess around, have a fucking heart attack, man. Man, Lady Smith only aprons, just aprons. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, uh, I mean, a smaller community. You know, like I said, around twenty people. You know, at 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 tops was was something I've always kind of, you know, thought would be a, a a perfect scenario type because then you've got enough people that you can have some guards. You know, you can have enough people to, you know, where you can rotate out, have not watched, you know, and rotate out with Overwatch, but, you know, still have enough to get the community done. And you can even have a couple of runners, you know, that scavengers or whatever it may be, you know. Um, yeah, exactly. It's about survival, you know, at that point. And, and so, you know, that that would be my 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 thought on it. But. Man, I mean, it's 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 going to be hard because there's there's going to be a lot of people out there that you get 12, 15 fucking guys together that 
didn't have shit, but they're 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 pretty, you know, they're pretty athletic, pretty trained. You know what I'm saying? As, as far as it goes, for can can do some shit. You know, um, man, they could they could turn rogue real easy, and and uh, it would be a it it'd be a hard damn uh, fight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they they yeah. they could go around and scavenge a lot of fucking people, man, and kill a lot of people before. You know they they get dwindled down enough numbers. You know, so there's always things like yeah. that. Why don't y'all watch how women? Well, we're we're definitely gonna need a group, man, because I mean you can't do everything. I mean you can't be the medic, you can't be the the blacksmith, you can't be the hunter. You, I mean, you can do a few of those things, but you can't be everything. You can't sleep without right. wondering if something's gonna happen to you in the middle of the night. You can't ha cook a decent meal, you know, for wondering, is someone going to smell it? Someone going to see the smoke? Someone going to, you know what I mean? Sometimes in the winter, you're going to need to stay warm. You're going to need a fire. I mean, and some that means you're just going to have to risk dying of cold or getting into a inter, you know, altercation with someone who sees your fire. So you need a group. You have to have that. If I agree, you can go long wolf for a little bit, but it's not a long term thing. And this is Willow. It's a girl, and no, she doesn't bite. And yes, she is growing oh. like a weed. Look. Say hey, Willow. I didn't see her. How cute. Yeah, oh, this is the wow. one I rescued uh, that came out of a tree I had to cut down. Her and her brother came out, and the brother didn't last but out two days. I think he might have had some internal injuries from the fall, but uh, she made it. So it was, I knocked her out of her life, so it was my responsibility to continue giving her life. You know, I didn't mean right. to take their home away, but that's what happened. So now her life's in my hands. So, yep, that's why I got Squirrel Daddy. That's cool. And B Papa, she's, uh, she's definitely... Uh, Man, without her mother instincts, I don't know if she'd have made it this far. She was she was getting up at one time every three hours and feeding the squirrel. You believe that shit? I do believe it. I do. Women have that tenacity, man. We we sleep with one eye open yes. already to keep the babies alive, you know? Exactly. She's crazy, man. She's crazy. But yeah, I just wanted to bring up the point tonight, you know, are we thinking about these scenarios on the level that, you know, that we're actually being real with ourselves is what it boils down to. In a worst case scenario, would you even want to live through an apocalyptic time? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that apocalyptic time can even mean multiple deaths. You know how much disease would be around if we had several billion people die right. just from the bodies laying around that we couldn't get rid of? I mean, there's so many different scenarios. So if they do go something that's biological, there's going to be things that they didn't even put on us that just comes naturally from effect like that. Yes. Yeah, for, for months too, man. I'll be right back. For I'm years, gonna, you know, they're yeah, I'm going to go put her back real quick. All right. But yeah, so it, so it'd be months, you know, and, and like, man, anytime it rains or whatever, all the, all the wash off, you know, from it going yep. into ponds and creeks and stuff like that. I mean, it'd be dangerous to, to, you know, drink anything. I think even with some life straws and, and stuff or not life straws, but, um, saw your minis and stuff, you know, <clears throat> You yeah, know, it'll contaminate water land somewhat. I mean, it sounds like a funeral pyre to me. You got, I mean, a lot of things that happen in history, people actually died of secondary infections and not the actual issue. Um, women giving birth, for example, they died in birth a lot, but it wasn't uncommon for that to be a secondary infection that actually kills the purpureal fever. Um, there's, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, World War I, more people died of infections from 
their feet rotting or being in stained water or whatever than actual fire. I could be wrong there. Maybe it was well, a I different way. I know yeah, that. I, I, think. I don't know. I don't know about the numbers, but yeah, I, I can guarantee you there's there was a you know especially World War One there was a hell of a lot of people died you know trench foot yep. and shit and all them yep. you know it's so nasty and yeah you know you got to think about it if if especially. You know, you got to worry about, you know, I know a lot of people talk about eating meat and taters and shit. And, and you know, I, that's mostly what I eat. But you also can get to a point to where you um, have, uh, what's it, scurvy or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yep. You can, uh, I mean, if, if it's a bad enough situation that that a lot of uh, greenery has turned brown, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, yep. Uh, that's right. a vitamin C better, deficiency. Better, better hope y'all motherfuckers got some cans of Popeye spinach up in your up in your cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking exactly. of I mean things like that. that. You don't want to you don't want to be something that you have to think about in the moment of you know, oh shit, I got scurvy. Oh nice. Look at that model. What the hell was that about? She just does that. She does that, man. Hutch has been a bad influence on her. She just, you know, Same. it's one of these and she's gone. It's like poof. My Hutch, poof. Hutch is, seems to be a bad influence on a lot of people, man. I might go see him this man, weekend. Man, I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> you ought to. <laughs> no, I think I am going to get ready to shut it down, man. I got to get up and I got to go yeah. do some pressure washing tomorrow. I got a big ass parking lot that uh not parking lot but driveway concrete driveway that I've got to uh, etch with some um, muriatic acid. And I've got to pressure wash it off and then reseal it. So, well, a lot to do, a lot to do. I got my big properties and and the I've got two or three properties that that are they're kind of soft, you know. Uh, especially when it rains, they they get real soft. So. You can rut them pretty easy. So yeah. I went and got all them done today in my biggest property. It's a soft property too. So hell, I just got, you know, I'm, I'm going to take off tomorrow because it's, it's already raining. It's going to rain tonight. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow. It things to be wet tomorrow. Man, thank y'all, everybody, for right, coming everybody. out with us tonight. Thank y'all so much, man. We, we, we yeah. really love you guys. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. We'd just be two two old bearded fuckers sitting up here talking shit if y'all weren't around. That's I mean, it. Which, and that's what we do anyway. But I mean, you know, it's, it's nice to have. The thank you for around. jumping up, uh, Roots and Backwoods. Thank you all for being here, brother. And I hope everybody it got you at least thinking. Look up some of this information, and uh, again, the uh, video, the uh, credits for that is down in the description. Again, old backwards. What are you wearing, too? By the way, before we get off of here, I've got my ghost merch on. I've got the uh, Deuce Alpha motherfucker shirt on. You know what I mean? Man, I By Ghost Designs. But, man, I bought this shit at the Dollar Tree, man. Oh, did you? Damn, damn, that's some that's some high quality uh, uh, threads you got there at the Dollar Tree, bro. Ghost Designs, right? Backwoods, three percent American flag with the three slashes on the back. See that? Right. That's right, Hell Joel. Yeah. So uh, go check it out. Uh, it's scrolling across the bottom all damn night there. Uh, get your ghost merch at ghostdesigns.shop. Apocalypse. Yep, back. Backwoods got his Backwoods shirt on. Yeah, you can go get you one of those apocalyptic Backwoods. Hey, Jeep, what's happening, brother? Jumping in last minute. We about to shut her down. Last call for alcohol. Jeep! We yeah, already turned up. turned up the disco lights and the bar lights is on. Yeah, uh, don't let him lie to you, Jeep. I'm drinking some uh some Crown Black and 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 Coke right now. So, well, some of them gonna carry the party on. This old man gonna get ready to go to bed. Everybody, I appreciate y'all being here. Backwoods, I appreciate you, brother. Hey man, um, I had, had I had a great night. Hey, hey, I, hold on a minute, man. I had something else I wanted to talk about real quick. All right, it, it's go really ahead. Important. Ah, uh, never mind, man. I was just joking. 
<laughs> you know what? I'll let you take the stage, man. Go ahead. Peace out, y'all. <laughs> All right, y'all. Have a great night. And I'm going to end this out with a song song. Y'all know how we do this all night long, long? How about welcome to my damn house? How about that, Backwoods? Like a little yeah, bit of that? Yeah. That'll work. Night, y'all.
baby girl inside this house And right now she's sound asleep So it's probably best for the both of us If you just turn around and leave Cause if you come in this fucking house Then you too gonna go to sleep I promise you boy don't play with me I pray to God my soul to keep Especially this day and age Gotta handle shit our own way With a 30-30 horse 12 gauge Behind this door your hell awaits My old lady she rides too Picking up every shell case Mopping up these blood stains But she ain't seen a damn thing Most of my people are convicts Hard headed, no nonsense So please approach with caution You never know who's watching You never know what's on the other side of that front door And you knocking Might step out like Motherfuckers get the dropping All the neighbors heard was the dogs barking The sun was down, it was getting dark And I told the sheriff, it ain't no problems, man I was just taking out the garbage So if you don't mind, please excuse me I'm with the family trying to watch a movie I'm sure you got better things to do So I'll let you go and get back to Take care, bear All right, everybody. Thank you for being here. Have a great night. Thanks again, Backwoods. Peace out, everybody. Peace out. Keep head on, head swivel. on swivel. We love y'all. I don't know about all that.